بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نو وی آر اسٹارٹنگ بیسک پیتھولوجی اور جنرل پیتھولوجی ان اٹ وی فرسٹلی اسٹارٹ سیل انجری اینڈ ان دس دے آر فرسٹ آرڈر اینڈ سیکنڈ آرڈر ٹاپکس فرسٹ آرڈر آر نیکروسز اپاپٹوسز ڈیٹ وی ول اسٹڈی ٹو ڈے ان شاء اللہ اینڈ دا ٹاپک وی ول اسٹڈی ڈے آفٹر ٹو ڈے ڈیٹ از اڈاپٹیشنز اینڈ کیلسیفکیشنس دیز آر دا ٹاپکس ڈیٹ آر ریپیٹیڈ ان ایگزامس دس سیکنڈ آرڈر ٹاپکس ڈیٹ می اکر ان دا فارم آف ایم سی کیوز اور ویری سلائٹ چانسز آف کمنگ ایز این ایس اے کیو آر دی میکینزمز آف سیل انجری ڈیٹ وی ول اسٹڈی ٹو مارو ان شاء اللہ نو ان انٹروڈکشن ٹو پیتھولوجی وی اسٹڈی ٹو تھنگس فرسٹلی دی ایٹیولوجی ایٹیولوجی مینس اینی تھنگ ڈیٹ کازیز اینی چینج اینی کازیٹو فیکٹر سچ ایز جینیٹک انوائرمنٹل دیر از ایئر دیر از ریڈیشن ایٹسیٹرا اینڈ پیتھوجینسس از دا میکینزم ڈیٹ لیڈس ٹو دا پروگریشن آف ڈیسیز مینس لائک ریڈیشنس فیل اٹ کازز ڈسپلیزیا اینڈ اٹ فارم دا کینسر and finally it causes the disease so etiology leads to pathogenesis means a mechanism and it finally leads to a disease and this is important because we know after it the rational treatment like smoking causes copd then the first thing in the treatment is stop smoking and then we will say that now we will give you drugs beta blockers etc next it says that there is adaptation as well adapt to the changes but there is a limit of the before limit when any change occurs when any causative factor acts when any environmental trigger acts cell responds and when the stimulus removes the cell returns to its original shape this is called reversible cell damage or when there is severe persistent or rapid change it causes irreversible injury these are the factors like it explained these are the infections toxins immunological agents genetic and nutritional these are explained here step by step and this causes to the etiology means these are the causative factors then comes the mechanism or pathogenesis of the disease it leads to the abnormalities in molecular functional morphological means structural and finally it leads to a disease that causes the clinical manifestations like exam uh, explained here if biochemical changes if there is disruption of sodium potassium ion balance like hyponatremia or hypokalemia then it will cause arrhythmia and arrhythmia will lead to their heart problems similarly if we see the structural changes then if any nerve is damaged for example ulnar nerve is damaged then there will be sensory uh, sensory you loss of sensations and also it may call lead to ulnar claw hand next it says the same thing that there will be reversible or irreversible and irreversible injury leads to necrosis means accidental cell death or apoptosis that is programmed cell death or suicide of a cell here it explains the figures one by one here uh, what is difference between hypoxia and ischemia ischemia is when blood supply doesn't reach a specific part like there is atherosclerosis a clot forms in the vessels of the leg then blood supply is disrupted in the lower part and in this lower part there is hypoxia because it can't get blood or oxygen so hypoxia is the reduced oxygen supply because of and ischemia is reduced blood supply so main cause of hypoxia is ischemia next it says there may be many toxins like carbon monoxide asbestos cigarette smoke etc infectious agents like bacteria fungi protozoa viruses and immunological reactions such as like we see in asthma there is an immunological trigger so similarly in autoimmune diseases in chronic immune responses etc in genetic abnormalities like we have read many genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia down syndrome etc these all lead to the cell death or cell injury in nutritional imbalances there are like in type 2 diabetes there is sugar imbalance or insulin imbalance made atherosclerosis is because of when we lead, take more cholesterol things and it leads to a clot formation in the vessels in physical agents it says that there may be temperature radiations chemical agents etc these are all the physical agents then it says there may be because of the aging we know after a specific age the cells starting die or they become uh, weak so it also leads to the weak response then reversible cell injury is the state of injury at which there is the deranged function and morphology of the injured cell but 
when this obnoxious stimuli is removed damaging stimuli is removed the st cell returns to its original state then it states that there are the several changes that occur during this reversible cell injury in which cell can return cell becomes pollen there may be the deranged organelles and lipids it says that cells firstly swell and when swell we mean that there is more edema there more water comes into the cells and when it occurs it causes increased turgor increase in organ weight and pallor why pallor because when cell increases in size it will compress the blood vessels there so blood is not able to reach there correctly so it will cause the pallor or yellowish yellowish coloration it also says that there may be fatty change in the organs like liver they, there is the more lipid vacuoles formation occurs in the during the reversible cell injury and in it whole liver it is called the fatty liver in in clinical manifestations next it says there are other intracellular changes such as there may be membranous changes like there may be blebs formation or mitochondrial changes it may cause swelling or there may be the dilation of endoplasmic reticulum and this is explained here in the figure so this is reversible injury it says damage in the mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum there is swelling of both and when outside this it says in cytoplasm there are myelin figures and in the membrane it says there may be blebs formation means membrane is disrupted and causes swellings or balloon like figures there and if this stimuli stays there and it continues disrupting then it may lead to irreversible or progressive injury and where it says that now there is the breakdown of everything plasma membrane organelle is nucleus every content is leaking there is uh, inflammation outside there are amorphous densities in mitochondria etc further like it said nuclear changes and there may be myelin figures in the figure next it says that uh, there are several uh, when any stimuli comes our body adopt to it similarly it says when barbiturates are taken more then these are metabolized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum cytochrome p450 enzyme it says that this causes effect on the other like when a person is taking barbiturates his smooth endoplasmic reticulum will adapt that they will metabolize faster the same person if has epilepsy and he is taking anti epileptic like phenobarbitons then we will see that the effect of the drug diminishes soon because this drug is the same the enzyme involved in metabolism of anti epileptics is the same as the enzymes involved in the metabolism of barbiturates so the anti epileptics phenobarbital will have lesser effect and they will be metabolized soon this is the effect of the body next it says the reversible and irreversible injury the point of no return is called nebulous although there are several morphological changes like there may be damage in the mitochondria membrane dna i we have discussed it before it says then cell death so firstly the difference every change that we have studied up till now like there is the cell is swelled enlarged the nucleus is the shrinked it is called pycnosis karyolysis is the fragmentation of the nucleus and karyolysis is the breakdown of the nucleus next plasma membrane it is disrupted cellular content there is enzymatic digestion in adjacent area there is frequent inflammation so all these changes are in the necrosis and everything is intact or no changes in the apoptosis except the cell size may reduce or shrink next specific thing is there will be a uh, in apoptosis there are pathological bodies formed apoptotic bodies formed because the cell is said like we don't need you anymore just suicide and then it says okay it packs its uh, mitochondria its organelles and several apoptotic bodies are formed that are engulfed engulfed by the other cells the other this apoptosis is the planned cell death and here is the injury is less severe and in accidental injury there was a severe injury like ischemia toxins infections and this injury was inevitable it shows here like this is the normal morphology of the kidney tubules like these cells are all aligned in the form of tubules then it says that there is a slight disruption now the membranes are not in the same shape because of the cell membranes are not in shape everything seems so disrupted and finally this is the necrotic or irreversible injury where everything is so disrupted and there is no specific structural formation 
Next it says that this is the this is the cell was cell function. So cell function was normal in the beginning, and when there comes like limit, it becomes irreversible cell injury, and it led to cell death. And if cell death program inhales like this is say ultra structural changes occur, then the changes may be so much that even light microscope can detect them, and then it may be so gross that even we can see the changes cell death from the neck die because there will be cell death of many cells, and a whole gangrenous area will form. Next, it says that uh, the if both are present, necrosis and apoptosis, it is called necroptosis. Apoptosis is the uh, intrinsic abnormality, like the cell signals itself, the body signals, like you have to suicide. Next, it says if cardiac cells die, they becomes non-contractile after one to two minutes. Means if the blood supply doesn't reach there in one or two minutes, cell uh, heart stops beating. But it dies after twenty to thirty minutes, and we can see notice cell death with electron microscope after two to three hours, and with light microscope after six to twelve hours. Next, it, it repeats the firstly same things that necrosis is the as we say said earlier, it is the cell membranes fall apart, enzymes leak out, cell digest, there is inflammation in the surrounding area, etc., etc. The same things we it's a repetition. Morphological changes that occur are the firstly cytoplasmic change. Cytoplasmic comes reddish or eosinophilic. There are two causes. Firstly, because the eosin protein binds to the denatured cytoplasmic proteins, and secondly, because the thing that need to apart blue means the RNAs or DNAs. These were basophilic. They are lost. So, resultantly, there is more red or the cytoplasmic comes eosinophilic. And here the cell appears more glassy, homogeneous, and there is a loss of the glycogen staining. Cell uh, cytoplasm becomes vacuolated and moth-eaten. These words are specific, better to remind them. And this word, amorphous intramitochondrial densities are formed. This is the past MCQs too. Then it says nuclear changes occur, like as we said earlier. Pycnosis means the nuclear shrinkage and increase basophilia. Karyolysis is fragmentation, and lysis is the breakdown. Fate of necrotic cell is that it is either phagocytosed. If it is not phagocytosed, it stays there. Fatty acid metabolism occurs. Then calcium ions come. They bind there and it becomes a calcified mass. So in uh, medicine, you will study that there are many calcifications like gallbladder calcification because the cell stays there and it's calcified. Next, it says there are different morphological patterns, mean anatomical patterns of the tissue necrosis, and this is very important. This is the thing that is most asked and most repeated here. Firstly, there is coagulative necrosis, as we say, coagulum means uh, there is a film textured substance. So here, the whole organ that undergoes necrosis forms a film textured appearance. And it occurs in all solid organs except brains, like there may be in the liver, in the kidney, etc. So injury denatures only structural proteins, and enzymes are also stay there. So they are blocked. They can't give do the proteolysis or phagolysis. So everything stays there. So a whole coagulum-like structure forms. This is coagulative necrosis. Then liquefactive necrosis, as the word says, there is liquid. Liquid, it can be pus, and pus. What happens when there is any bacterial infection? So, there is an in bacterial in or in fungal infection, or there may be inflammatory cells. These lead to a formation of a pus in an area, and this is known as liquefactive necrosis, and it also occurs in the CNS basically. Like this is the brain part, and you see this part is the liquefactive necrosed. Then gangrene, gangrenous necrosis is of two types. It may be dry or wet. In dry, there is lost of blood supply, means ischemia of a limb, and whole a coagulum is formed. This is called dry gangrene. When bacterial infection is superimposed, there becomes pus, and it is really disrupting figure. So this forms a wet gangrene. There is very much like okay, gandu majawa. Caseous necrosis is specific for TB. Here, the cells that die form a cheese-like appearance, yellow-white appearance in the center, and around it, the cells phagocyto phagocytes accumulate. Like this is the cell type. This necrosis cheesy yellow is caseous necrosis. 
the surrounding cells are macrophages and other inflammatory cells and this whole round thing is the granuloma and this mcq is very much repeated fat necrosis means fatty acids break down it occurs in the pancreat when pancreatic enzymes leak out of the snr cells and ducts and these liquefy the membranes and lipases clip the triglyceride it leads to fat saponification and it is shown in the figure here this is the fat necrosis in acute pancreatitis finally the fibrinoid necrosis this is a necrosis that is not much obvious even in the microscope and difficult and detected with difficulty it occurs in the blood vessels because of the some antigen antibody complexes like in autoimmune disease or in severe hypertension so appearance is like is shown in the figure there is a pink bright amorphous appearance called fibrinoid and it occurs in the polyarthritis nodosa next it repeats the same things then it says a cardiac enzymes is specific for keratin kinase and hepatic bile ducts is specific the enzyme that detects the injuries the alkaline phosphatase and hepatocytes damage are detected with transaminases ast and alt that we have studied in biochemistry then apoptosis is the suicidal death cell death the pathway of cell death in which cells activate enzymes that degrade cell that degrade cells own nuclear dna and nuclear cytoplasmic proteins so plasma membrane is attacked the apoptotic bodies are formed and these are edible and phagocytosed this is the pathway like the mitochondrial condensation then membrane is plaps and the part goes in that these are the apoptotic bodies and these are further phagocytosed physiological apoptosis and pathological apoptosis like these are the mechanism physiological when an embryo is forming so when there is a involution of hormone de dependent tissues there is a where it's where dehydration so cell need to take energy from the other cells etc so these are the physiological mechanism and pathological mechanisms are because of the dna damage because of certain infections because of misfolded proteins etc so these are the two mechanisms then the enzymes involved the are the proteases involved are caspases in this pathway there are two mechanisms of apoptosis that we will see in the diagram this is the mitochondrial or intrinsic pathway and the death receptors or in extrinsic pathway firstly in intrinsic pathway we see there is other cell injury factors called growth factors dna damage misfolding proteins etc et these are detected by bh3 sensors and these stimulate bcl2 family that is pax and pac so bh3 sensors are called a part of the bcl2 family or a dimension of that these further signify the mitochondria like there is a damage and then it tells cytochrome c and po apoptotic proteins to signal the caspases caspase activated in intrinsic pathway is caspase 9 and in extrinsic path is caspase 8 extrinsic pathway is regulated by receptor ligand attraction by fas and tnf means tissue necrosis factor receptors type 1 these say the cell you need to die and then the caspase 8 activate and both of these caspases if activated lead to two types of damage firstly they break the cell skeleton or cytoskeleton so that the cell may not keep its specific shape or it may disturb all the nuclear fragmentation so by both of these mechanisms the cells lead to death finally it says that there are the other pathway necropoptosis means rip rest in peace or receptor interacting protein kinases it's called i specify in just of one like rip because there is both necrosis and apoptosis of the cell pyroptosis pyro pyroptosis is the there is apoptosis and inflammation and we see where where there is inflammation there is fever so apoptosis is occurring and the patient, patient feels fever finally last thing is autophagy means self eating it leads to lysosomal digestion means the autophagolysosome is formed a specific a thing that we don't need or, or there any mitochondria that is not functioning we pack it in a vacuole and then this vacuole attaches with the lysosome forming an autophagolysosome and it is disrupted and this is seen in the ischemic injury myopathies or polymorphisms here ends the topic of today alafis